Income tax 2022-2023, Archer MSA deduction. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Most of this information comes from instructions for form 8853, Archer MSA and long-term care insurance contracts, which you can find at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at our income tax formula, we're focused on line number two, adjustments to income. Remembering that the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement, although a strange one, where we have income minus the equivalent of the expenses, those being the deductions getting down to the bottom line the equivalent of net income but here taxable income everything's upside down it's all worldly derby topsy-turvy where we want the taxable income to be as low as possible as opposed to normally when we want the net income to be as high as possible remember that the adjustment to income can be thought of as a deduction or as a contra income account because it's decreasing the income line to get down to the subtotal of adjusted gross income, an important subtotal because that's the one generally used to phase out things as income levels go up, like deductions and uh, credits. Also note that this line might be called above the line deductions, schedule one deductions. They also are not limited or you don't have to clear, in other words, the hurdle of the standard deduction before you can take these above the line adjustments to income. All right, so we're focused on line number 10, adjustments to income from schedule one. When we look at schedule one, part two, we're down here on the Archer. Archer, swirling Archer. MSA support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it deduction now this is generally kind of an older type of thing so it still possibly could come up but usually you can have questions about the health savings account which is up top we talked a little bit about in uh, prior presentations but it's good to get kind of some context and the history uh, on this as these kind of these health type of things as they weave in and out of the tax code uh, come into play because you're going to see similar strategies as they're kind of trying to tweak these these you know strategies with regards to the tax codes so caution after december 31st 2007 contributions can't be made to an archer medical savings account for you unless you were an active archer msa participant for any tax year ending before january 1st 2008 or you became an active archer msa participant for a tax year ending after December 31st, 2007, because of coverage under a high deductible health plan, an HDHP of an Archer MSA participating employer. Now the high deductible health plans is another kind of key term that needs that you gotta kind of understand when you're trying to figure out all the benefits related to uh, health insurance. And a high deductible means that you generally have to pay a higher uh, deductible the, when you get uh, something when a problem happens but it, it also means that the premiums are usually lower so the, those are going to be the cheaper type of plans where, which often sometimes are linked to some of the credits and whatnot because the idea would be that those would be the people that are buying those plans or uh, are the people that should most likely have access to credits and so it's all kind of tied together so Use Form 8853 to report Archer MSA contributions, including employer contributions. Figure your Archer MSA deduction. Report distributions from Archer MSA or Medicare Advantage MSAs. Report taxable payments from long-term care LTC insurance contracts or report taxable uh, ex accelerated death benefits from a life insurance policy. That's when we're gonna be using this form 8853. We're focused on the Archer here. Additional information, you can see publication 969 health savings accounts. That's the other big one that's, that's gonna come up 
more often oftentimes these days than the Archer and other tax favored health plans for more details on MSAs. So who must file? You must file form 8853 if any of the following applies. You or your employer made contributions for 2022 to your Archer MSA. You are filing a joint return and your spouse or their employer made contributions for 2022 to your spouse's Archer MSA. You or your spouse if filing jointly required an interest in an Archer MSA or a Medicare Advantage MSA because of the death of uh, the account holder, the death of account holder later. Uh, you or your spouse, if filing jointly, were a policyholder who received payments under LTC insurance contract or received any accelerated death benefits from a life insurance policy on or per diem or other periodic basis in 2022 to see instructions for section C later. And we won't go into all of this here, but we're just going to touch on it. You or your spouse, if filing jointly, received Archer MSA or Medicare Advantage MSA distributions in 2022. You could take a look at the instructions yourself for if any of these things uh, apply, you can dive into it in more detail. So eligible individual to be eligible for both for an Archer MSA, you or your spouse must be an employee of a small employer or be self-employed. You or your spouse must be covered under an HDHP. That's the high deductible health plan and have uh, no other health coverage except uh, permitted coverage. So this is the often kind of the issues with these health plans because remember when they're trying to adjust the laws for the for the health insurance, the, the health insurance traditionally kind of went through the employers, was kind of a tied to the employers. So then the, you can ask situations, well, what if my employer doesn't provide health insurance or I work at a small business or I'm self-employed, then, then you have a situation where you might not have the as beneficial of a plans and you possibly could have the high deductible uh, healthcare plans, which are typically going to be the lower cost uh, type of plans, which is why you would think the lower income individuals would be purchasing the high deductible health plans. Although you might just also buy those because you're, when you're healthy, you know you might have you might be content with a high deductible plan as opposed to one that's going to be uh, there every time you every time you take medical action because you're not doing a lot of medical action when you're younger versus when you're older or something like that. But in any case those are the ones that are, are going to be tied to some of the some of the benefit programs and the policies as we can see here so you can see how just in general some of these some of these concepts get kind of tied together health insurance used to go through the employer but now what if you're self-employed well what well then how are we going to determine who should get a benefit from the plan well we can try to figure out a plan and categorize the plan into types of plans like the high deductible health plan which is usually the one that again is tied to some of these kind of benefit programs here such as we see here and possibly we'll see later when we get into like the health insurance marketplace has a similar kind of conceptual framework okay so you must be enrolled in medicare and can't be another person's dependent you must be an eligible individual on the first day of a month to take an Archer MSA deduction for that month. So small employer, a small employer is generally an employer who had an average of 50 or fewer employees, employees today during either of the last two calendar quarters. So it gets messy when you start to kind of categorize companies uh, as large or small or businesses as large or small, because then you have to have this arbitrary line that's going to be cut off. And so now they're just picked 50 employees, right? So does it does it make you large if you when you fire when you hire that 50th or 51st uh, employee? Uh, you know it's kind of an arbitrary line, but that's the kind of thing that happens again with these when we try to try to put these rules in place. So Archer MSA generally an Archer MSA is a medical savings account set up exclusively for paying qualified medical expenses of the account holder qualified medical expenses what are those generally qualified medical expenses for archer msa purposes are unreimbursed medical expenses that could otherwise be deducted on schedule a form 1040. so note this also gets messy because when you think about what qualifies as medical expenses which we will see when we get to the schedule a because sometimes you can deduct medical expenses on schedule a which are the itemized deductions although although they're, they're severely limited uh, because of AGI. You have to clear a hurdle of the AGI hurdle and so on. 
But you can imagine people getting quite creative on what a medical expense is. My doctor said I can buy a jacuzzi or something like that. A whirlpool. It's not a jacuzzi. It's a it's a health whirlpool or something, you know, and, and so you could see, you can imagine a lot of gray area with medical ex my doctor said I needed a trip to Hawaii or something, right? So and there's a bunch of cases, uh, law cases about these kind of arguments that you can you could dive into when when more weird stuff happens when people are trying to categorize medical expenses. So see the instructions for Schedule A Form 1040 and Publication 502, Medical and Dental Expenses. Qualified medical expenses are those incurred by the account holder or the account holder's spouse or dependents. Amounts paid for uh, menstrual care products shall be treated as paid for medical care. I'll see the instructions for line seven later. You can't treat insurance premiums or qualified medical expenses unless the premiums are for LTC insurance, long-term care, health care, continuation coverage or health care coverage while receiving unemployment compensation under federal or state law. High deductible uh, health plan. So an HDHP. So this is the key term and you'll hear it whenever you're looking into these health plans, especially with regards to benefits with regards to health plans. For example, when you're looking at uh, the health insurance marketplace and that kind of thing. So an HDHP high deductible health plan is a health plan that meets the following requirements. So minimum annual deductible, if it's self coverage, 2,450 family coverage, 4,950 maximum annual deductible, 3,700 for self only, 7,400 for family and then maximum annual out-of-pocket expenses other than for premiums 4,950 for the self only family coverage 9,050 so other health coverage if you have an Archer MSA you and your spouse if you have family coverage can't have any health coverage other than an HD uh, HP because then if you had other coverage you would expect that you would use the other coverage uh, generally and so that means why would you have other coverage possibly because you have a job or your spouse has a job that has the ability to get coverage through uh, through their employer so however your spouse can have health coverage other than an HDHP if you if you aren't covered by that plan so meaning when a spouse has coverage as an employee oftentimes they can cover the entire family possibly under the family plan but maybe they in a situation they don't and they're only personally covered in which case you might still be able to get the hphd so exceptions you can have additional insurance that provides benefits only for liabilities under the workers compensation law tort liabilities or liabilities arising from the ownership or use of property a specific disease or illness or a fixed amount per day or other period of hospitalization you can also have coverage either through insurance or otherwise for accidents disability dental care vision care or long-term care so see other health coverage in publication 969 so obviously when we're thinking about health coverage they kind of differentiate the terms of what is health coverage versus other things which you might think is kind of similar coverage meaning you have dental coverage is kind of its own special area vision is its own special area which they kind of think of as separate from your standard medical coverage right disability possibly and then uh, when you have car insurance coverage and that kind of thing uh, that could have a like a medical component to it but it's not really tied to your medical coverage typically and long-term care is still you think medical coverage but it's got its own kind of thing for its own purpose and it's, it's like its own category so in any case see other health coverage in publication 969 health savings account and other tax favored health plans for additional information about exceptions so figuring your archer msa deduction the amount you can deduct for archer msa contribution is limited by the applicable portion of the hdhps that's the high deductible health plan annual deductible line three and the compensation compensation 
from the employer maintaining the HDHP line four. So any employer contribute uh, contributions made to your Archer MSA prevent you from making deductible contributions. Your employer contributions to an Ar Archer MSA will be later. So also, if you or your spouse made contributions in addition to any employer contributions, you may have to pay an additional tax. See excess contributions you made later. So you gotta be careful to be in the regulations on your contributions. So you can't deduct any contributions you made after you became enrolled in Medicare. So Medicare, uh, once, you, once you're eligible for Medicare because you've reached the age to be eligible for Medicare, then that's kind of like health, the health coverage, right? So, so oftentimes if before that time, so now we've got a system where you kind of have like government health care or insurance for the most part, Medicare after, after uh, you're qualified, after you reach the age to qualify for Medicare, which means that you, you wouldn't really have the high deductible plan at that point, which, which means that, which is what you need to have in order to get access to the archers and all that kind of stuff. So that, so, so that's where the Medicare kind of comes into play here. Also, you can't deduct contributions if you are someone else's dependent. Employer contributions to an Archer MSA. If an employer made contributions to your Archer MSA, you aren't entitled to a deductible. If you and your spouse are covered under an HDHP, uh, a high deductible health plan, with family coverage and an employer made contributions to either of your Archer MSAs, neither you nor your spouse is allowed to make deductible contributions to an Archer MSA uh, because the employer is making the contributions. So, and okay, so if you and your spouse both have an HDHP with self only coverage and only one of you received employer contributions to an Archer MSA, the other spouse is allowed to make deductible contributions to an Archer MSA. So that's a, a general outline. For more information, you can take a look at the instructions for Form 8853, Archer MSA and Long-Term Care Insurance Contracts, which you can find at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov.